Hi, my name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Thanks for joining me for another episode of YouTube Tuesday. Today I'm going to be working with our beautiful 12x12 designer papers, available in four different designs. We've got Indian Summer, we've got Northern Lights, we've got Shenandoah, and we've got Rainbow River. Now each of the 12 by 12 pads come in, um, you've got 12 different designs in each and you're gonna get four sheets of each of them. So let's just have a quick flick through Rainbow River and we'll have a look to see what we're getting. So you can see you've got a beautiful, really vibrant design on one side and then on the reverse, you've got a more soft and muted tone. So it's great for scrapbooking, um, for doing matting and layering, perfect for working as inserts. Um, you can also use them to make picture frames, you can use them to make um, photo albums. So have a look at our library and see which ones we've released so far because I've today I've been recording a number of videos and everything I've just mentioned have all been done. So that's the Rainbow River. Then we've got Shenandoah which is one of my favourite ones, some beautiful scenes in there. All of the papers are double-sided. They are 150 GSM and they're acid-free as well. So again, perfect for the scrapbooking. Then we've got the Northern Lights. I love that one. That's absolutely fantastic design, that one. And then again, the more muted sign, signs, more muted designs on the reverse. Oh, I love this one as well. I've got to show you this one. That is absolutely stunning. And then when you look at the reverse, you've got that beautiful glow on the reverse. Sorry, I get carried away. Then we've got the Indian Summer, another one of my favourites. So all of these are available as 12 by 12s. That's a nice one. I like this one as well. Um, 12 by 12s, 8 by 8s, we also do it in parchment, 8 by 8, and we do it as a single-sided card topper in a 5 by 7. So check out the website afterwards and have a look. Just search for designer paper or designer parchment and you'll get all the options come up. Right, so what am I going to show you today? So today, it's a really, really um, old um, style of card that I made years ago but when we brought out the 12 by 12s I thought these would be perfect for it. So let me show you what we're going to make. So I call this a, a pop-up diamond card. So let's just get the, the balance right and you may already be familiar with it so I'm going to show you how you can create that. So it gives you that beautiful sort of freestanding style card. Um, but what I also love about it is that this could be the outside of your card and then when you open it up you could have like a, a party invite in there or you could put another piece of card in there and it just folds down completely flat to go in the envelope. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this card. One using a scoreboard because I know most of us have already got scoreboards out there and the other way is showing you how to do it without the scoreboard. So nice and simple. So first, my hardest decision is deciding what piece of um, 12 by 12 to go with. So I've already sort of pre-decided that I'm going to go with Shenandoah and there's a beautiful, I say, they're all beautiful. I'm going to go with this one. Okay, so because I'm going for the back, I'm just going to press flat on the, the paper. Oh, look at that one. Oh, decisions. No, definitely going for this one and then you just gently release the paper. Okay. So what I need to do, at the bottom of the YouTube, there's also gonna be a download with the guide and the measurements on there as well. So what I'm gonna do, this is, my, this is my version of it. So what I did is I drew out a plan, worked out where I needed to score and everything else. And so, but your version will be a nice printed version and not all my um, scrappy writing. So to start off with, I need a piece of paper that measures 12 by six. So in comes the paper trimmer. And we're just gonna measure that. 
so that it's six inches. So really, I'm gonna get two out of one piece of 12 by 12. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that to one side. So for the first one, I'm gonna use a scoreboard. So what I'm gonna do, where's my scoreboard? Here it is. So, wouldn't lose that, would you, that color? Um, so what I'm gonna do to start with is I need my pen, here we go, and I'm gonna mark at three inches, six inches, and nine inches. Then I'm gonna turn it long ways, and I'm gonna mark at three inches. Then I'm gonna turn it over, I'm gonna do three, six, and nine, and then finally, on that side, I'm gonna mark three inches as well. Okay, so I've got all my marks in place. So I could do it with a pencil and then obviously rub it out, but just for the camera, I'm doing it in um, pen. So my first score line is I'm gonna score at six inches. So score all the way down. Then what I want to do now is I want to score from this point up to that point up there. So I'm going from the three to the nine diagonally. And what I've done on my scoring board is I've put a black solid line down. So what that means is that when I position that three inch mark there, I mean, it's an old trick, it's been around for years, but just by making it black, it just makes it easier to follow the design. So then I'm gonna score at that point, and then I'm gonna repeat and score at those points there. Okay, nice and easy, he says, trying to get it lined up. There we go. And score there, and then I'm gonna go from those two points up to the point in the middle. So you could say do it with a scoreboard like I am, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it without a scoreboard. But we'll do this one first, one step at a time. Okay, so then bring that one into play there. And then the final one, point to point there. Okay, so I'm gonna Put that to one side now because I'm now going to show you exactly how to do exactly the same but without a scoreboard. So the other piece that we cut off, all I'm going to do now is take a ruler and then I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to mark at, oh where's my glasses gone, at three, three, where's the six? Need to get a better ruler, six and nine. This is where it could go all terribly wrong. And then we're gonna go, probably because I'm using a dark paper as well. So, and then three. It'll be easier, yeah, it's lighter now so I can see what I'm doing. Three, six, nine. And then three. So the process is exactly the same. Okay. And the raw I'm going to do now is just take my number two groovy tool and I'm going to score exactly how I did before at the halfway point. And I'm working on a black mat, and it is a firm black mat, but there's enough giving the paper. Um, in order for it to, to actually make an indentation in the paper to create the score lines. Okay, so I can work with either of these now, but I, I might as well stick with this one, I've got it in front of me. So all I'm gonna do now is where I've done the creases, I'm just gonna use my bone folder. I'm gonna fold all the creases inward first. And what I find, if we do all the, the creasing first, 
it makes it so much easier when you come to get it to, to fold. And that way there. And then what I like to do is then fold it in the reverse direction as well, because it just makes, when we come to do the concertina type effect, it just makes it so much more easier. Okay, so that's all our scoring and folding, no cutting, a little bit of measuring, but nice and easy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in our beautiful leafy swell aperture die. Now I love this one because the die will work in any direction. So where we've got the diamond, I think this just works absolutely perfect for that. So what I'm gonna do now is attach it to the front. And once I'm happy it's in place, I'm gonna use some low tack tape just to hold it in place. Okay. I'm gonna bring my plates in from my die cutting machine. So I've got my frosted plate, I've got my poly pocket, I've now got my die that's just moved. Let's get a new bit of tape. <laughs> Any tape after all. And we'll just make sure we're happy with that. I think so, yeah. Tape that in place. I've then got my Oops, frosted plate. Come on, play nicely. Thank you. Frosted plate, <laughs> magnetic shim, and then my clear cutting plate. And then we just run that through the machine. Okay, so now for the big reveal. We'll open up the sandwich. I'm gonna bring my little waste bin into play. Carefully remove the low tack tape. I love this design of die. I think it's so great for a men's card, for as a background, but look, it falls away. Let's just give it a tap. Totally clean, not a piece left in it. And then I'm going to lift this up. And that, there is nothing left in the design at all. How dramatic does that look on the black? Absolutely, so elegant. And what I also love about this die and a lot of our other dies is that you can cut these flourishes out and use them as embellishments. Right, let's get rid of the waste. Pop that over there, pop that under there. Okay. So now what I wanna do, I wanna put a piece of contrasting paper behind it. So I've taken a piece of our eight by eight and I've trimmed it up already. And so now when I pop that underneath, I've got that beautiful blue behind it. So what I'm gonna do is take some high tack tape and I'm just gonna run that round all four sides. Okay, so we've now put the tape on. So this is the fun part, trying to get the backing off. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna attach that to the inside. Oh, that was lucky. That was lucky, perfect fit. Now, if you, when you do this, you find that you've got some of the, maybe the double-sided adhesive is still outside of the, the area, then just take some token powder and just dust over and it'll take the stickiness away. So now we turn that over and we've got a beautiful design. So now we need to create the fold. So all we're gonna do is fold these two points into the middle so we'll use some tape on each of those corners. And that folds in there. And then we're gonna do the same on the bottom. We're gonna fold those two corners in. 
like that. Okay, so what we end up with is sort of like a, I'm sure there's a name for it, it's a funny shape anyway, but I'm sure there's a technical term. And then what we do, because we've done the folding backwards and forwards, we just sort of push in and it collapses on itself. Okay, so, so again, this is where you could use it. You could put another piece of card in there as an insert. But now we've got a little standy up diamond card, but it needs a finishing touch. So I think what we'll do is we'll just stamp a word out so here's my scraps of paper that I've got from when I cut back the 8x8 to do my panel. So I think we'll go, yeah, we'll go with that one, a little bit of darkness. And then <clears throat> we'll bring in my word chains. I love these word chains. Um, what about, I'm not going to tell you what the word is until I've stamped it. No peeking. So I've got my piece of paper. Put that to one side, still not showing you. And then I'm gonna ink up, no peeking. I'm gonna cover it up so you can't see it. And then I'm gonna position that, you can probably see it by now. And I'm gonna stamp that down there. Surprise! Okay. That's me saying that I need to have another coffee because it's all kicked in now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, there's some little um, exclamation marks and I can have all three of them. But if you haven't seen any of the other tutorials, let me just show you, it's a tip that I got from Barbara years ago. Just mask off two of them to reveal one. Take your ink pad, ink it up. Remember to remove the tape and then stamp. And you've now got one exclamation mark instead of three. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer, hiding behind me. And then I'm just gonna trim that down. And then I'm gonna take a piece of copy paper, another trick from Barb, and then take a, any, I mean, I'm going for black, and you take a permanent pen, and you just run along the edge. And what that does is it gives you the effect of matting and layering without wasting any card. And then we'll take a tape runner and then we can position that I think about there press down and then we've got surprise and we have this one's been opened a lot so it's a little bit more there we go bring it forward sometimes if you just fold it in again You will stay up. There we go, let's put them side by side. There we go. So, surprise and sunshine. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, if you have, then please leave a comment below so I know that you've enjoyed it. Or if you haven't enjoyed it, leave a comment as well, I don't mind. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then feel free to subscribe. We do loads and loads of videos. Have a look at the library. Barbara blogs every single day. Um, the information will be at the bottom. Um, check out our website, www.claritystamp.com and don't forget to get the download, which is a proper printed one, not my handwritten scribbles from the bottom. Thanks for tuning in and I'll hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.